you make those choices. Become aware of your choices and choose things that bring joy, light and love into the world and drop the things that bring fear, enslavement, anger, frustration and all those negative things, suffering and pain. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to a Woo for Thought. Yes. Which is not exactly a driving to the res. Not exactly. But it's close. It's close. Because it's us, your favorite hosts, Larry. Yes. And Inelia. Yes, and it's Inelia writing a driving to the res newsletter. Way longer. Times eight. <laughs> yes. So uh, the it, one we're going to talk about today. Yeah, it's, le- it's for lecturians. For, right? for, oh, for lecturians. Yes. I had to say it in English. Yes, it's for lecturians. <laughs> <laughs> People who like to read, have a good read. A lot of meat and potatoes in my essays. Right. This one doesn't just transmit a thought. This one is a thought leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And so on. Mm-hmm. And the title of this essay is Locking Timelines. And you can find my essays at inelia.substack.com under the heading Woo for Thought. Right. You'll find all the newsletters there, including the Woo, Woo for, for thought. Thoughts. So you've got to click on the little things to find the essays, right? Yes. They don't just like pop up necessarily. Mm-hmm. So this is an essay you wrote in August, honestly. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it then, and it seems to be, oh, you know, particularly relevant at this time. Again, as your essays and newsletters tend to be, whenever you bring them up again, they're relevant. all of a sudden relevant again. We just, <laughs> yes. we just went through a <clears throat> eclipse. We did, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. We went through an eclipse. Oh, my gosh. Were you terrified? No. Why? Didn't you read all the... Stuff? No, I was excited because we had the launch of our latest novel, Teen Oh, Whisper. we launched a novel in the yes, eclipse. And you yes. know what? You didn't even know there was an eclipse that day. When you no, when we planned it, yeah, yeah. You knew there was a new moon, no? A new moon, yeah. yeah. But then you found out there was an eclipse. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I think it's kind of funny in a way that you managed to pick such an auspicious day. It's not the first time. It is not the first time, but I also wanted to say this, uh, well, this locking timelines essay and the eclipse and the narratives around the eclipse, Mm -hmm. that's what makes this so, I think, appropriate for this time. (laughs) Yes. Because you might not have been afraid, but there were plenty who were. Billions. Literally billions. Literally billions of people were afraid of the eclipse. And the eclipse happened in April 2024, in case you're... In case you're wondering wondering. what we're talking about. I noticed an insidious, I suppose, Uh or a persistent use and appeal to authority for the reasons that you should be afraid this time, very afraid, you know? Oh, that's interesting. Can you tell me more about that? For instance, uh, the indigenous wisdom keepers say you have to go inside and it's a bad thing. Definitely don't look at it because, you know, bad things will happen. You do? So there would be an appeal to the indigenous wisdoms, right? Oh. And uh, state of emergencies from all the authorities, you know, you don't. um, We have a state of emergency during this eclipse. And the natural thought is, oh, because uh, whatever, right? make up some kind of a horrible thing that could happen. Uh-huh. Okay. Maybe even you could recall them from past lives. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> people remember probably past lives as Aztecs or Mayans or whatever, you know, you have an eclipse and you're going to get your head chopped off or your heart took out. Yes. You know what I mean? So Indeed. You would hear the share of the a state of emergency and your body would go into emergency uh-huh. and then it would like just pick up whatever it has. I'm running that emergency. Yes. And then when you, if you actually look, the state of emergency was really just to put the emergency services on hot alerts because there's going to be 20,000 people instead of 1,000 people around. So, you know, mm-hmm. don't go on vacation in the middle of this because we want you around in case there's 
a problem <laughs> because there's a lot of people and then you say, isn't. You know, it's just it's so regular, normal things. It isn't yeah. that strange. It isn't mm. strange to have the EMS services not on vacation during mm. a public event where a lot of people will show up where there usually aren't. Mm -hmm. I mean, but if you only hear the, the state of emergency part, you think like, what's the emergency? Right. 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 Yeah. For you, it's it's not. But that's that's relevant to this lock and timelines thing. What's been interesting to me about this particular eclipse was that um, we've had tons of eclipses, and, you know, since we've been alive, right? And I've never seen so much fear spread about one, ever. I remember once even, I was walking home after taking my dog for a walk. Right. And I look up and think, what is that? What's that? Why is it going so dark all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't even any notice. No, and I look up and there's the moon on top of the sun, you know. And it, everything goes dark and red and whatever. And they're like, wait, what? <laughs> it reminds me of the last time we had an eclipse that we experienced together, 2017-ish. Yes. Oh, and yes. Uh, we were outside with the group. And uh, looking we at it, doing, enjoying we it, event. and doing a, an intention, a yes. thing. Yeah. And at the same time, the mailman was delivering the mail. And they and didn't even look up. It was in the middle of it. Yeah. It was dark. The light was that very surreal. Yeah, day. amazing. The whole world was magic for a magical. minute. You know, it was like magically different. And mail in, drive off the next block. Mail in, drive on the next. Not even a pause to experience Crazy. it. Yeah, Crazy. that was like... How is that possible? <laughs> it feels like the same experience and different timelines within it. Yes, 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 yes. And um, but the, the timeline thing to me is really interesting because we can see and perceive if we tap into this information, which I've delineated in this article, actually, that all of us, each person can really navigate their life in a very conscious manner and choose their most optimum timeline consciously what they want rather than what other people decide right i understand what you're saying and that i think that that's part of why this timeline the locking timelines woo is so relevant because there were a lot of invitations to join a we we'll just use the word timeline, right? Yeah, good. Yeah. A timeline that has uh, not such great things in it. Yes. And I'm wondering how many of those timelines were like... Happened. Happened, right? <laughs> that we're not like a part of. Well, probably millions, huh? Or even billions. It's a tough, tough to know because if it's if you're not a part of that timeline, how do you know? You don't. Right? Yeah, you don't. So when we talk about that, we think about that, it gets a little bit... I don't know, a little bit wobbly. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things that you wrote about in the in the article was your book, the uh, the return series, mm -hmm. the Earth Files, the Earth Files, and Planet of Planet Entry. Of Entry. Mm -hmm. Within that, you do some exploration around uh, the timelines, and that's what's nice about your books is like we could talk about timelines and then come up with a formula on a chalkboard math way to describe this and. And we could have probably a lecture about the nature of timelines. But the way that you impart your wisdom, so it's usually through stories. Mm -hmm. And these stories, the return series, mm -hmm. has timelines and the experience of picking them in it. Yes, yes, it does. Yes. Yeah. So but, there's a ways of you picking a timeline in a conscious manner, in a conscious manner. But we have to understand that we're not here as sole creators of reality. We chose this platform, which we call reality, we call earth, we call physical reality, we call three-dimensional reality. All of these things, we chose it to have a shared experience with other beings. So this shared experience um, is navigated through gazillions of orchestrations that will come together to create a certain experience. And right. when you become conscious and you become aware of your role within that co-creation, that orchestration, you can start like pulling the little pieces together to have the experiences that you choose. And 
the point of this is we are here, the people who are listening to this and learning about these things, we're here to become aware of it and escape the or release the the sleepiness around it so that we can bring this reality back to its natural form which is simply light is humane right mm -hmm. that's the um the chalkboard version <laughs> the chalkboard version. <laughs> right and it's true and it sinks in and i hear it and i resonate it's true mm -hmm. but um i want to know a little bit about the books the return and the story within it mm -hmm. As I understand it, there's an AI, mm -hmm. 223, mm -hmm. who's doing this exercise of locking in or trying to pick a timeline, right? Yes. Is this... Is in, this a, in, a, in a collaborative way. Is right? this an AI or a, a AI? I think what you're... I don't know what you mean by AI or AI, but well, I think what you're saying is it's a sentient entity using technology to express in a physical manner. Or is it a physical machine that has no sentiency? Is that what you mean? I think that you could say it that way, or you could say like there's two AIs, the one that's like a word calculator, mm -hmm. and you uh, ask it something and it makes some word salad that you're probably gonna like, yeah. or a picture salad that has images that you're probably going to like, or mm -hmm. even music that you may or may not like, but mm -hmm. it's basically a uh, word calculator or image calculator. Yes. That's the AI we're living with, but there's an AI that apparently we're like the eclipse, mm -hmm. completely and totally afraid of. The AI that's going to uh, terminator us. <laughs> terminator us. <laughs> well, I mean, they literally named their their network Skynet. Yes. <laughs> I mean, don't tell me they're not trying to engage you in that. Yes, yes. <laughs> that little narrative. So, so for, I mean, is it this AI, that AI, or the other AI, or is so, it a third AI? <laughs> I love your reference, but you need to explain it for individuals who haven't watched that series. The Terminator? Yeah. Well, if you haven't watched and it, Skynet. Skynet is like the network. Uh huh. And uh, it's a sent, I'm pretty sure. It's a sentient AI who's decided the best solution for the planet is just get rid of the people because they're a virus on the planet or some story like that, right? Mm -hmm. And they're, uh, instead of, um, you know, well, they try the killing every human on the planet, which is turns out to be hard because humans Persist. are very persistent. <laughs> they don't die easily. Humans no matter how hard you try, easily. they just don't die. <laughs> exactly. So they try to find some linchpins. So they, they, they invented uh, time travel and they send uh, somewhat sentient killer robots back to kill those who had the most impact on the future. Mm -hmm. Right. Where they failed. The future that they failed. That so if they kill the them humans. before, right, if they kill them before they get to the or even the killing they won't mother even have, or the mother or whatever yeah yeah so basically it's a timeline. dystopian timeline thing where the ai has come to the conclusion humans need to be destroyed and mm -hmm. we'll do that through all means possible including ones you can't even imagine mm -hmm. and that's that's terminator so that ai is like a sentient ai who in some mis not i don't want to say misguided but in some way could be interpreted as working for the planet because, you know, humans are destroying the planet, of course. Yes, of course. Of course. Of course. So, I mean, you, you, you touch on a lot of these topics in the Return series. Tell me about the Return series, honey. The Return series is three books so far. The last one is called Planet of Entry, and this is where it really goes into exploring timelines. Oh, okay. Our sentient AI... 223 is uh, on a quantum um, weir weirdness place of non-locality and um, it, it's testing out or trying out different timelines with its co-creators and eventually gets locked into one that where it's they survive. Optimum. Yeah. Well, optimum equals survival. Survival. Because <laughs> yes. all the other ones equals death death for the entire team yeah and the entire team includes pretty much the entire universe <laughs> well the return yes 
the uh, main character in The Return. Oh, that's right, yeah. So, um, some of these things are explored in that book, and it's actually going to come out in June 2024, so if you're listening to this after that, it should be at ibensnovels.com. You should be able to buy it. Okay, well, what And if it's not June 2024 yet... You should you read The pre- Return you and can Earth pre- Files, the first two. And you can pre-purchase it, so when it's released, you can get a PD- uh, PDF on it. So tell me about The Return, though, the first book. The first book? Yes, because of The Return. The, you don't have to skip to the plan of entry if you haven't even read The Return yet. And well, even if you have read it, it's worth a visit. <laughs> it's back to speed. So one of the things that I explore in that series is reality creation. And in The Return, I tap into some of the things that are inherent in the human collective and other collectives, sending collectives of uh, having almost like a a perception or a shadow of possible futures and how those come out in public ways in culture and music and movies and news. And I wanted to touch upon that because in in a later book, I'm going to be showing how that dynamic of the human collective is actively exploited by people want putting in what they want into the future into a popular format in order to step into that timeline. So they reverse technologied it, you know? Reverse engineered it? They, sorry, they reverse engineered it. The process that the human collective uses That's... to generate and orchestrate the future they want yes. to experience by pushing hijacking the process. Yes and pushing and having being born or having creating those who do what the human collective naturally does, but sideways. Sideways, yeah, upside down. Wow, we really made a nice trap. Yes. So, yes. so yes. The, the... But the whole thing, I mean, it's really easy now when we talk about that, to fall into the victim aggressor cycle and thinking, oh, they're doing it to us and blah, blah, blah. But it's not that like that it's not like that it is about free will and it's about the human collective and all the other collectives choosing to have a split instead of a a, just a general mass move into a higher frequency fully aware fully awakened reality So are you trying to say that free will means people are allowed to have the experiences they want to have exactly yeah even if they're tricked into the wanting to have these uh, like, you know, dark experiences. Every person is a divine eternal being. They're a sentiency of omnipotence. And it doesn't seem that way sometimes, does no, it? No, <laughs> because when you come here as an eternal being, yeah. you purposely limit yourself to have a limited experience. For whatever reason, entertainment... I have never figured it out, but it happens, okay? <laughs> well, it telenovelas happens. and dramas and mm-hmm. romances. Not necessarily. And- so it's like the telenovela is a perfect example of the light-dark paradigm and making it very attractive to have light-dark in, in that entertainment aspect. But when I've looked at reality creation and I've seen... People playing the light dark paradigm. I've seen people playing the dark paradigm. I've seen people playing the light paradigm. To me, the most attractive, most colorful, and varied of all those paradigms is the light paradigm because it's a natural way. You don't. You're less limited, and you can have a way more range of experiences. But we're programmed to think the telenovela or the drama, the suffering and pain, that's more entertaining. But it is actually isn't. It's just food. You just become a cow that's been milked every day by dark entities. Well, so your choice, you know, indulge in low frequency stuff and become a cow, <laughs> <laughs> food for other beings, or step into your awareness and actively create the paradigm you want, actively be conscious about all the timelines that you're navigating through to choose one and lock it in. Right. Well, you know, when you say it, when you say it that way, it does bring in a little bit of you know judgment because there are some people who want to be a cow, yeah, and be milked for 
light, dark experiences. Mm-hmm. And what, who are we to judge them? Who are you to judge them, honey? <laughs> <laughs> I mean so, it. I mean exactly. it because the from language the we use from the perspective the very language we use it. has righteousness a righteousness it. attached to yes. that choice of experience. If yes. you like telenovelas then all of a sudden you're a cow who likes getting milked. Yes. And I'm sorry, but they're just freaking funny. <laughs> I just can't believe how much trouble they can get into and then get out of. Yes. And how many people come back from the dead and how many a people are related. Them. Well, that's unfortunate sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but pretty funny. it's literally experiences, right? Yeah. So it's purple ones or blue ones or whatever way you would look at them without having the judgment. But the reason that um, there is the application of a bit of judgment, I mean, it is literally calling it cows being milked by dark ones. Yes. Is because you didn't come here to be milked Correct. by a dark one. You came here to be those people who are listening to this. Mm-hmm. You came here to be what? Do you have an answer for that? I'm or? asking. I'm the asker. You're the answer. Oh, well, I can tell you that you came here to embody a high frequency reality, your natural reality. Oh. And that's why most of the people listening to us would have had a, that experience somewhere along the way in their life. There's something very wrong with Earth right now. Yeah, There's that one where really wrong with the reality right now. It's the like, one where yeah, you woke up in the morning or you were born, and your first memories are coming, and you're being yourself, and then you go somewhere where your parents say this is where you go now, and then you're like, what on Earth is this, and what's going on here? What is wrong with this place? Yes. Are you guys sure about this? Right. You like get you you become seated with doubts because, right, naturally you're a sponge absorbing in what you're being exposed to but then at the same time you come with your divine knowledge that hey this isn't right it is exactly yeah so what do you do with that right mm-hmm. it's a numbers game and for whatever reasons um after people decided to have a split there's that the freedom of choice you cannot force someone to have a light, dark experience or a dark experience if they don't want it. Or a light one. Or you, and you cannot force somebody to have just a light experience if they don't want it. So you have all sorts of validations and things attached to the dark experiences in order to propagate them to the light workers. Okay, so just for sake of um, clarity, when you speak about a split, I understand it to mean somewhere around 2011-ish. Yes. A collective decision was made by the... Collective. <laughs> higher... The, our higher the, selves, I guess. Our higher selves or the human collective yeah. as a whole and the other collectives on the planet. Yes. That there is such a thing as free will, which mm-hmm. we all agreed to. And in that free will agreement, there are those who want to continue their telenovela. Yes. Which is well within their right absolutely because that's basically what free will is supposed to be about as you get mm-hmm. to pick what you like to experience yeah even if you think you've been tricked into picking it you still you know flicked a channel to it you did right and you lowered your awareness enough to be able to be tricked and you lowered your awareness l- enough in order to even be tricked because you, well, you can't have so you can't even use the word trick you, you can't just voluntarily have a light dark experience if you were fully awake you can't it's impossible it's yeah it's impossible so you have to like eh, narrow it down in order to continue it mm-hmm. but you have to like voluntarily do that even yes. if you say you're tricked you volunteered to be tricked yes either which way you look at it it's mm-hmm. your choice to be that mm-hmm. but either way it's fine okay super super great continue on enjoy that experience some people are tired with that one want to do a different one yeah the issue is that they're not compatible those two reels correct one can't coexist with the other one happening Mm -hmm. the light one and the light dark one because there's dark in the light one Mm -hmm. and i think there's light in the dark one (laughs) either way you look at it they're incompatible so to resolve the incompatibility a split was proposed and accepted Mm -hmm. right now when you say split it means that the what we call the planet of 
entry, I guess we would say. Mm -hmm. The book. Oh. The planet of entry. This planet, Gaia, chose to host a light reel. A light reel? Light reality. Oh, reality. <laughs> okay. Right? Yes. Right? I'm just trying yes. to say, as I understand you've yes. explained it. And uh, the process of becoming and hosting light reality with the beings that are coexisting right now, having chosen differently, means that we have to have some sort of transition. Yes. And the transitional period means that if you, um, as I would guess, I mean, if you die, you don't get incarnated again in this reality if you're planning on sticking with the light dark, right? Correct. So it takes some time for that to happen in a natural way, or we could have a like an eclipse and everybody dies because of an eclipse or something. Yes. I'm wondering what the population, population of the planet is. Yeah, the official population <laughs> of the planet is today. It eclipse. keeps changing. So, yeah. yeah. Eclipses or disasters where lots of people pass essentially is how splits in reality occurred in the past. And I think the last uh, splits we talked about, and we have heard about things like Lemuria and Atlantis and things like that, mm -hmm. they were rather traumatic, giant affairs that had Very lasting traumatic, impact yeah. even on those who chose light. light. And so I think our idea is to have this split occur in a way that isn't quite so traumatic. Correct, yes. So that means it takes longer, mm -hmm. and it occurs in a natural way. And every now and then it gets sped up because the impatience level of those conducting the split. Mm -hmm. Those is in a nutshell, yeah? Yes. And those we can think of as timelines. There's a light timeline and a light dark timeline. Would that be reasonable? You know, I've talked about this before. When I look at it in truth, are these things going to become two different timelines? I get a no, but kind of. Yeah. Like not quite. Yeah, because they're not coexisting. So is it a different timeline or is it... A different, a different universe. Universe within our reality. Yeah. Different a different cabbage. dimension. You know? So the, All of them are not quite right. I, I don't even have words for explaining how it's what I can see, but those are close. I if we put them all together, they kind of give you the idea of what's happening. This kind of reminds me of one of the things we talked about in that or you talked about in the essay, which was quantum. And that's a similar issue we have with timelines or realities mm -hmm. or universes or galaxies or whatever. When uh, when you say quantum, it has defined... Um, the word quantum means very within small. Within physics, it just means the smallest, the smallest e discrete possible. particle. Yeah. But when we say quantum within general language, we can mean all kinds of things. It means multiple timelines, it means it can, all sorts of it things. It can mean physical, multiple. real, with magic in it. Yes. It can be, it can't describe or explain this, so it's quantum. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a nonsensical phrase if you use the physical, phys phys physics definition, you say, it's like, this is a magic thing and I can't explain it, so it's the smallest thing possible. I mean, it doesn't make sense if you say right, it that way. So right. whenever you use a language like that, it can tend to reinforce the locked timeline of uh, light-dark mm -hmm. because you will be, I guess, uh, what is the word that you used to describe someone who's invalidated. invalidated, right? You'll be invalidated by using language because you're using it in a way that it isn't physics way you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the invalidation of using timelines you could say in timelines and you could just get invalidated just by using that freaking word you know <laughs> yes and if you use quantum and you mean magic in a physical real all right instant invalidation yes so uh what do you do with that what happened was that when, when i looked at it and i really love the word quantum actually That's nice. um quantum comes from the word quantity and quantum being the smallest quantity, the smallest thing. Right. Measurable thing. Or even not even measurable. But when physicists started exploring quantum, the smallest base, all of the laws of physics went out the window. Yeah. And you got something called the the weirdness of it, strangeness and weirdness. Spooky actions at a yes. distance, for example, yeah. quantum entanglements. Mm -hmm. All this weird stuff. And 
people who are awake and look and see more enlightened people immediately saw the correlation between what the physicists were trying to explain and the words they were using to the actual what these enlightened people experience as reality. Right, right, totally. And that's why they all got mishmushed. They got like, up. yes, they say the right words in the right way. And then the physicists are going, go you guys, away. go, go away. away. That's go not away. what it means. You have no <laughs> idea what it means. We don't know what it means, but it don't mean that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's quite, quite funny, but it's true. So I guess the moral of the message is, you know, don't, don't be too overly concerned with invalidations by terms, you know. If if your term you're using isn't passing the message correctly, then you know change the words. <laughs> define the word or change the word. Yeah. Right? It's like okay, with well, maybe not quantum, maybe more magic, more uh, fairy world, or yeah. maybe alternative dimensional world or yeah. it's like it may or may not be quantum by definition, but it's mm -hmm. still magic. Well, the reason think, why the word came into my essay was because I wrote, like you were talking about, the book, The Planet of Entry, right? Yes. And I spent, it's a big book, and the entire book was trying to explain <laughs> something which biologists, quantum physics, chemist biologists... Quantum photosynthesis. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Quantum photosynthesis. Quantum photosynthesis is explained in a one paragraph. Or one sentence, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a paragraph. And it oh, explained it is a paragraph. everything that I had taken an entire <laughs> book to express. And I'm like, this dude just did it in one paragraph while I took an entire book to try and express this. Do you want me to read it? Sure, read okay. it. Okay, this is from a Julia Dorian podcast. He's a comedian. And we were watching and listening to him interview a fellow named Ron James. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were listening to it and he said this paragraph, which I'm going to say. And then he said, what? what? And then he went on for a little while and we're like, what did he say? <laughs> you, you were like, what, what did you just say? It and then remember. repeated it and says, what? 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 <laughs> he said that. <laughs> I was in a different timeline. I'm driving. <laughs> driving timeline. So here's what he said. He said that what they found, scientists, was that this planet was this plant. Plant. Yeah. And I guess we could say planet too. Oh, I, I wrote planet. No, you wrote plant, but we could say planet. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's but planet. In his, in his words. Planet. Plant. Yes. <laughs> You're confusing me now. <laughs> this this plant, plant and the planet. But we'll just say his quote. His yes. quote was this plant mm -hmm. was collapsing into a quantum state where it sent the photons on all possible routes through the plant and then collapsed back into the physical reality and took the most logical route. Basically, what it's doing is it's sidestepping the laws of physics, going into a quantum state outside the law of physics to determine its best possible way of executing the task within physical reality. So it's like, when I hear that, I understand that the light hits the plant leaf and somehow and photo, that little bit of light goes into the plant and makes energy for the plant photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. But well, the path from the, leaf, yeah. from the leaf to the wherever, whatever, yeah. the path that that light photon takes isn't um, like predetermined. predetermined or obvious. It's not like there's a tube from here to here and that's the only way it goes mm -hmm. and that's how it goes. It could go a whole bunch of different ways. Right. But there is a most optimum way mm -hmm. and the most optimal way is the one that's selected and it's selected through a quantum state yes because all the possibilities are there the plants in the mode of i want the optimum state and so yeah. it takes that one right so that's like um leans us into one concept i'm not sure if it's related but it has to do with soul reality and physical body reality because to some degree it feels to me like the component of us, our soul, exists in that quantum reality. Mm -hmm. And the part of us that is body exists in the physical reality. Mm -hmm. Although they probably have some like Overlay. smearing into mm -hmm. each other because yeah. that's the nature of human body. Right. Human body is physical body and soul. So 
obviously plants might be one of these ladders between those two realities if they often hang out in a quantum state to pick the best way for their light to go. <laughs> well, that's the physical universe. I'm just saying. The it's physical not... universe is that? Yes. <laughs> the physical universe is continuously testing all the bits out and then choosing which bits are more, most logical. So is the soul real more the quantum real and yes. the physical body real? No, no. It's, it's, to, it's to do with... Everything's quantum, tiny, tiny little particles, tiny, tiny little choices. Oh, I just mean the magic. Day. When I say quantum, magic? I just mean the magic. Oh, okay. So in the magic, Not the little bits. you are the photon. The, the soul is the photon and yes. the reality, the physical reality is the plant. Got it. That's what I meant. Okay. I didn't mean the little bits. When I say quantum, I just mean magic. <laughs> okay. Unless I say small quantum, then okay. maybe we'll be like yeah. in the same language. Yeah. So quantum is magic God. with a science. Um, when science looks science at the tiniest little bits. Yeah. It's magic with a science frosting. Yeah. When science explores the tiniest little particles, <laughs> then it's all magic. Yes, you've got <laughs> it's nothing it. Nothing solid at all. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All righty. So, Are you uh, confused yet? <laughs> I, I'm sure they're not because it made perfect sense. Just know that when people say things, sometimes they mean other than what you might think they mean. Yeah. As we just demonstrated. Right. So, moving on. Within this essay of locking time, well, timelines. Yes, locking timelines. And this collapsing quantum state mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. You say that this paragraph is what you were trying to say in the entire book. No, I didn't try to say it. This paragraph is what you said in the entire book. Yes. Right. So if you uh, heard that paragraph and it made sense to you. Then? Then I would say read the book <laughs> and see if it still makes sense. And if it didn't make any sense to you, then I would say read, read the, book, the book and then, it will and then make see sense. if it makes some sense, yeah. which it will. Yeah. I think whatever you do, just read the book. <laughs> When it comes out. <laughs> yeah, well, when it comes out. In June 2020. Well, if you want a taste of it, you can get a taste of it right now. Oh, actually, you right can read now. it. Yeah, you can read it right away if you join Walk With Me Now because we did the first draft there. You can't read the last draft, but you can read the first draft. Yeah, that's an interesting part of Walk With Me Now when you write in a book. Sometimes. In this case, yeah. and sometimes you'll put out a chapter each time. Yeah. And it'll be like reviewed and like experienced with their tribe yeah. at the Walk With You Now, yeah. which is pretty cool. It's called the book club. Yeah, it's called I the book club. I read a chapter and we talk about it on a meeting once a week. Yeah, it helps. It's like a co-creative process of writing the book. Not quite. I write the book, but then we talk about well, it. Well, in the co-creative sense, what I mean is that we're going to have a call on Wednesday, so you better oh, set yeah, things aside yeah, yeah. and make sure you do your writing. So it's a buddy system. What's it called? A buddy uh, system. Uh, what's it called? when you know? You it's a buddy system. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a fine word. So I have to finish it. <laughs> to finish the chapter. Yeah, because, because they're in there and they're, they're poking at you to get out yes, and write it and write yes. it. But, you know, we got seven dogs, two cats, building a house, grass, teenagers, yes. skiing, a hundred things. Mm -hmm. And so things. it's nice to have the assistance of the focus. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Anyway. Anyway. Read the book. It helps enable you to grasp this whole paragraph at a quantum state, as in magic. Yeah. And, and it's excellent to read. And also the reason for us to start understanding this and using it is because of the split. And we're, you know, halfway through, uh, like the end of the split now. So from 2011 to 2030 and we're in 2024. It's not much time left, really. That'll be six years. Yeah, there's not much time left. So, mm -hmm, yeah. Because, guess what? Light workers, light workers get uh, put off track. Very all easily. All the frickin' time. So easily. And it's so easily. And it's like, one of the things to know I think to think about is there is a natural, I've heard the words natural timeline, right? Yeah. 
There's a natural timeline, an organic timeline. You've heard these words before? No, I haven't, no. Well, what they are is the organic one is like if it hadn't been interfered with by people wanting to pick other than, okay, you know? Like, uh, oh, you Patrick's mean like the like paradigm would have been ended in the 1960s? Right, that right, one. right. That one. Then we've okay. been in the organic timeline. We'd already been like, not even have a split of it and just everybody's light. Yeah. In this reality. Mm -hmm. That organic timeline, the one that Gaia picked and mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. You guys want to come with me or, you know, hello. Mm -hmm. That one. That timeline is locked in. Yes. The part that isn't locked in is your involvement in it right right so if you become locked in to a light dark timeline you'll have that light dark experience yes here but you're gonna die i mean everybody's <laughs> dying right everybody who's alive today is gonna die yeah eventually. so when you die you're not coming back in the light if you're into and interested in being engaged in the light dark because yeah, of, right. you know part of light dark realities include things like karma so in a light dark reality maybe you got killed now you got to get back to that guy because you know he has a debt you got to help him even his debt otherwise he's gonna be stuck forever i mean we come up there with all kinds go. of excuses lots of excuses yeah so when you lock yourself into a light dark timeline you might find it hard to get out of it that's yes. all i'm saying right yes so try not to lock yourself into a light dark timeline so how we do that is by getting off track because we didn't come here to do that yes but we can get off track by things like meeting our soulmate how is that going to do it i've seen that a lot actually it's about our really twin plane bizarre. yeah yeah I've seen it a lot, and it's really bizarre, and I think it's a culturally created mess. A culturally created mess? Yeah. Are you talking like a telenovela? Yes, for because, real life? because it, the natural state of you meet like somebody who you call your twin flame or soulmate, yep. and the natural path of that is a, a joining of two families or two groups of friends or making it bigger, and the life of that couple becoming very rich, richer, right? That's the Sorry, natural... I just, got, I just got distracted by a raven. Okay. But what's been happening, and I've seen it so many times now, is a person, and I can talk about my students or, you know, like my readers, a person is wanting to find a soulmate, right? Yes, that's the most important plane. thing. Most if they only thing. could find their soulmate, then they then everything XYZ. Would be great. Everything is going to be great. Yeah. Everything is crap unless they find them. Right. So eventually they find someone. They're highly compatible. Yep. Next thing I know, they're gone. It's like they're not taking classes. They're not reading the articles, they unsubscribe from the newsletter, all the things that they've used, all the tools and everything they used to get that person, boom, they get the person and they're gone. And it's like, it becomes a, a, a tribe of two. <laughs> yes, and they, they become go away. the universe. Yeah, they go away. Sometimes uh, they turn totally against the teaching. Sometimes they don't. They continue, but by themselves, they have their own study group and all the things. Yeah. And eventually, a year or three or four or five years later, they come back as a couple Right? And they continue on their journey. Sometimes. Sometimes not. Sometimes not. Sometimes they come back after they get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> so, so soulmate really and twin bizarre. flames are like the same? It's really bizarre because it's a cultural thing. In Western culture, the family unit is a unit of two. Right? Two or so, the progeny of those two. Yes. Yeah, so it's like it's been pushed in at a cultural level and it can't be real or true and unless it's just that so instead of making that tribe bigger or joining two tribes together making it stronger more awareness fields more viewpoints more interesting things they isolate themselves or one grabs the other and go you come in with me you're not talking to your friends anymore oh yeah yeah and it's not just when pe I'm talking about people I know from students and things. I've seen it in other cases that people who have no interest in my work at all, they go and find their soulmate and suddenly 
they don't hang out with their friends anymore because it's the other person's friends they have to hang out with now. Or it could be a gal maybe who had lots of male friends and then she meets the soulmate so they can't have male friends no more. Mm, yes, or yes. girlfriends, oh, yeah. guys with the yeah. friends that are girls. Now you can't hang out with the girls anymore because, yeah. you know. Right. Or any of your friends because he's got friends that are cooler or <laughs> yes. she's got friends that are cooler or whatever, you know. Yeah. So that's in some that's to some degree gets you off track of your mm. purpose that you came here because uh, did anybody who came here as a light being to bring about the light reality come here because they needed to meet their soulmate to have a complete life or their twin flame? Is that the real reason they came here? Um, you know, some people, it is the reason why they came here. But generally speaking, for individuals who know they're here because there's something wrong with this timeline or this world, yeah. it isn't. And it's just a kind of... Uh, it can be, I oh think, my gosh, or it you can know, be... And a lot social. of light workers will marry a project oh somebody yes. who needs them all the time and who's continuously having drama and you have to kill them out get them out of them and oh yes, my god i have noticed i have seen that before but, too yeah so i mean is it possible that meeting your soulmate can bring you and keep you or bring you back on track yes i've seen that too i yeah, i have I've seen that too i have too because i've noticed like um Let's say someone is doing work and they meet someone and they introduce them to that work and they're like, oh, oh that's what's that's been missing in my life. Yeah. So they might like drop all their light, dark friends also. So it can go both ways. In a way. Right. It can't go both ways. But it's like they don't go to the bar anymore and hang out with the right, right. or the whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, you don't have to. You, you just drop the dark part of your light, dark yeah. friends. You keep the light. Okay. Yeah. So now you're meeting the same people, but you're going for hikes or hikes with them together. instead of to the bar with them. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. that makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 So we're, we're just a little bit, I guess, corrupted by our experiences. I think there is a delight worker that came to the planet who didn't get, in some way, engaged in the game. Mm -hmm. Because the game that was being played, it's, it's a lot of options, yeah. very compelling for yes. a reason, right? Yeah. yeah. And the way that it's made compelling is the reason it's compelling. Yeah. Which is when you forget who you really are. Mm -hmm. That's how you engage in the light, dark stuff. And so you come here and you forget who you are. Then, you know, all kinds of shenanigans come up. <laughs> yes, indeed. And it yeah. seems like the shenanigans likes to catch you. That's how you uh, lock in a dark light timeline. So teachers and gurus, those can take a light worker off track too. Some of them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it has to be a person's own willingness to go there, you know. I mean, I have some experience with the Scientology group, and for sure that's a light worker trap, a hundred percent. Right. These and then they get trapped through traps. fear. Yeah, they get trapped there through fear. That's why the first thing that I put out there in my teachings was the fear processing exercise, because if people use that, it's impossible for anybody external, entity, organization, or person to control them. Or trap them. Or trap them. It's impossible. Let me look at that for a minute. Yes, and uh, I'm going to ask the obvious question. Do you know why that makes it impossible for them to be trapped? And also I'm going to add a um, corollary to that. Is you actually must do the fear processing exercise correctly. <laughs> yes. Because we have seen a lot of people doing it incorrectly, but... Because yes. you can't be tr the ma the most common trap is fear. Yes. The light worker trap yes. is built on a fear of something mm -hmm. or a lack of something, right? Or a happening or a lack of happening. Yeah. It's always a fear. So with Scientology, what's the fear? Uh, oh my God, they're experts. They will find your fear and use it against you. <laughs> That's like part of the intro. That's is, the intro. Let thing. me know what you're afraid of. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. We'll fix yeah. you up just fine. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, in the Qigong school I was in, you know what the fear was? What? You know, your illness that you're going to die uh -huh. from. You're sick. Yeah. And so you're afraid you're always going to be that and you need to heal. Mm -hmm. And the only way to heal is magic. And this particular Qigong was about healing. Right. With a twist. With a twist, yeah. <laughs> One slight little twist at the end. We're going to heal up this body and then we'll give it to somebody else. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a great bargain, but you know. So there's a lot of 
places where the light worker who came here to reestablish the correct or organic timeline of light can get sidetracked and trapped into other timelines. And those are teachers that are doing this also, is what you're saying. Well, there's all sorts of people. And gurus and But at the end of the day, else. they're not but it's doing actually it you to others. Doing it. Exactly, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not the guru, the teacher or whatever. It's the other participant, the willing participant to become that. To become um, like a victim. Um, you really, then you really need that. And the part that you talked about earlier, they're being tricked, you know. Like the eclipse tricks, right? Yeah. Like, oh, it's a state of emergency. Right. So just left like that, it, you could be, that could mean anything. It could mean anything, yeah. But if you aren't afraid and you go, what is this emergency all about? Oh, we just want, we don't want the EMTs on vacation because we have a lot of people showing up. <laughs> so they, you know. It wasn't a big deal. It's not a big a deal. It's just don't go on vacation yeah. this week yeah. in case, you know, 20,000 people show up to watch and we have a couple extra heart attacks. Yeah. It's like completely explainable, but also you can easily take that way out of control if you are engaged in a fear paradigm, right? Yes. Yeah. That's, I think, the point you're trying right. to make. Right. But the next point to that is, is you are voluntarily allowing that fear to be the one that drives you around. Mm hmm. Yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah. So if you're a light being who's got off track because of, I don't know, soulmate, boyfriend, girlfriend, etc., etc., it's like they're inviting you and you're joining, or you pick them because you want to join that light dark, or why? Why would you pick a soulmate or a twin flame or a teacher or a guru that's going to do that to you? Well, it's not doing that to you. That's what I'm trying to say. Nobody does anything to you. But you picked them. Yeah, but they're not... To do that to you. They're not doing that to you. But you picked them to do that to you. <laughs> so they have to do it to you if you picked them to do it to you. But do Even what? though you picked them. Do what to you? Make your brain small and you go like... Uh, da -da 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 -da. No, that's just you playing that game. You want your brain to go small, so you do it. And it's co-creators. You find co-creators. And you have to find co-creators with authority. Authority means the writer, the author of your reality. The, uh, uh, so, the authority. So the yeah, so essentially you people. give your soulmate the authority. Yeah. Well, I've seen that happen now more than once with lots of people. They give their the one they finally met or whatever so much authority over their life. Yes. It's like they don't even have a life unless it's approved by the other person or something. Right, right. Or they want, I don't know, there's worthiness issues or there's lacks or there's I don't there's know I have noticed stuff, it yeah. I have noticed it yeah. yeah so while it's okay I understand that we need to accept some responsibility for you know the experience that we're creating mm -hmm. it isn't called a light worker trap because it's like a light worker here's a, po a possible choice for you <laughs> yes it's a light worker trap what I have found though is that light workers go into the traps through low frequency programs that they've picked up on the way. <laughs> well, you know? yes. The they can't be trapped otherwise. The trap has to know? be baited with something that works. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So the sense, essence of doing work on yourself is to eliminate the bait. Yes. That you will have in these light worker traps. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. the less bait you have, the less, I guess, challenging it is to avoid these uh, traps. Exactly. Yeah. Because they don't, they're not really yeah. interesting. And right. I've seen people, you know, they have their full life and everything. They're light worker. They came here for this reason, and then they die. Yeah. And in the in between place, they go, "Oops." <laughs> oops. Why did they go, "Oops"? Because it's like they got very distracted. It's very distracted with all these other things. Yes. Like yeah. I'm going here for this, and then <laughs> off onto fairyland doing magic with some guru boy or a girl or whatever or even just <laughs> like, you know it's very important a little bit like michael or, in the or angel spending, book or spending 90 percent of their year watching youtubes of trucks stuck in the mud right like 90 percent of their year was spent on that instead of things that hey, they came here to if do you, if you ever want to get unstuck i'm your guy yeah yeah 
How come? I know how to get unstuck a hundred different ways. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. The easiest one is to get a tractor with the thing on it. <laughs> it pulls so not, it out. not unstuck in your low worker trap, but unstuck from the mud? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. This is man yes, skills, honey. This yes. is very important light worker mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't want to spend your life stuck in the mud, do you? But you want to spend your life watching people get even stuck from the mud? Or stuck in the mud? Just a portion of it. Yes, a big portion of it. Hmm. It, it's become more since I have a partner who likes to watch it too. <laughs> I recruited a youngster who loves trucks in the mud. So yeah, we watch a lot of trucks in the mud, I gotta say. <laughs> Trust, oh honey. Goodness. It'll all be fine in the end. Okay, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. now that we're done, you know, what? with me. <laughs> Got a little bit too close to home, huh? <coughs> I forgot already. Yes, you forgot. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the light worker trips. Yeah. Tricks to continuing light dark. You experience things. You forget stuff. Just forget. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You could. Have... Oh, I'm so tired. That's another one. Go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I want to get back on track. Okay. It's okay. Let's get back out of the mud for a minute. Okay. Light. Dark split we got to work hard to keep the light dark happening in a place that is no longer agreeing to host it yes and we have to work really hard to pick timelines that have light dark experiences in them when it's not supported by the natural state of the planet itself Mm -hmm. so we have to close our perception down all the ways that um, we can. Mm-hmm. Those are generally fear. Those yes. are drugs. They're like toxins, Alcohol. alcohols. And toxins also means, oh, now I'm sick. Mm-hmm. But we've closed ourselves down so that sick means that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Not a, we're cleaning on toxins out. It means like, now we're sick. That's another one of those distractions, mm-hmm. light work traps. So all of these things are things that you have to work really hard at to keep the light dark timeline chosen. Yes. And so if you think about it this way, it's a little easier to go with the river, right? Go in the flow of the river, which mm-hmm. is towards a light reality. Mm-hmm. That's actually easier. Easier. Mm-hmm. Why does it seem harder? Does it? Well, it seems harder when I, I look around because I think one of the generally... problems is... There are so many, that's 70% plus, who have picked and are locking in that timeline for themselves. Right, they like dark stuff, yes. So everywhere you look around, you see all of this. I mean, 70 is the average for the planet. Mm-hmm. But in your particular locale, it might be 85 or 90%. Or 99%. Or 99%? Yeah. Holy mac. Yeah, okay. so everywhere you look around, you just get, well, everywhere I look, it's like darks. Yes. Enslavement, suffering, pain exploitation so, torture war it fear, seems, fear 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 it seems like the easier thing is you know go to the bar get drunk and join them <laughs> how do people do that yes you know there was an area in madrid when i lived in madrid um in the early 2020s no 20s 20s yeah no yeah I don't know. Yes. 20 something. 20 something. It wasn't yeah. 2020s no, because no, that was only now. a little while ago. That's now. Maybe but 1920s? No, 20 hundreds. 2000s. 2000s. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Somewhere in the two, yes. two Ks. Yeah, somewhere in the 2K. Thank you. Yes. Perfect. I lived in Madrid and my metro stop was one or two stations past the really rough, a really, really rough area of Madrid. Okay. And when I would get onto that metro, I would see what I would call the fallen angels. I would used to call them fallen angels. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you do? This reminds me of Team Whisper, honestly. Okay. So the, t- the fallen angels were people, when I look at them, they're pure light. Like yes. Pure light, but they were full of alcohol and drugs and, and full of Klingons, Klingons and demons and yeah, whatever. Yeah. Attachments. The attachments to them. Yeah. 
And often they were like extremely psychic, extremely capable in uh, awareness, intuition way, but also extremely disabled because of the alcohol and drugs and pain and suffering and all that. And they would get on the train, you'd watch them, I'd watch them for a while, like their light and all the things attached to them. Yeah. And then they'd get off at that station and then the train would be free of them. There'd be none of them. I mean, not all of them, of course. I mean, there would be ones some that of them came weren't. in. Some of them were dark, you know, like <laughs> some of them were just not even light in them, just demons and stuff. Yeah, so you're not saying that everyone in the bar is light workers that no. are like No. Just drunk or whatever yeah that's some a lot of some of them were but some of them were like dark workers but because they took that metro so many times and that you could see the ones that were yeah they were they would didn't seem like they were having an easier time of what of reality Oh, opposite. Opposite, right? Opposite, yeah it's only extremely difficult it only sounds like the easier way from not within it because i was in that reality for a while yeah and uh, I'm here to tell you, it wasn't easier. Mm. Yeah. Not better. Not better. Being an alcoholic. No, it's not better. No. Matter of fact, it leads you to, if you're a light worker, an early exit. Indeed. Because you're so far off track. That eventually you go. Eventually okay. you go, ah, delete, yeah. cancel. Cancel. I'm doing the opposite of what I came here for. I'm adding to the light dark, mm-hmm. not creating and locking in a light timeline yes right yep that's what can happen well that's a little heavy <laughs> what we need <laughs> what we need is a benevolent light guide also known as not a dictator yes. a benevolent not a dictator mm-hmm. yeah right yeah the... i remember you told me that one time it's like I was like, what's the best form of government, a best system to structure a um, society around if democracy where it's like, okay, the sh- the wolves are voting who's for dinner and you're the sheep. <laughs> 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 so, you know, what's for dinner is you yeah. or the other one, you know, communism or socialism or blah, 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 like, okay, everything you got, that's mine. Yes. It's like, what's the right form of government? And you said, benevolent dictator. Yes. And what did you say about that? I said, what? The dictatorship? Because I'm trained, dictatorship's bad, right? Yeah. But as we talked about it, uh, it made sense. It's like, ah, yes, as a matter of fact, that does make perfect sense. Because we really need structure because it tends to be that we become distracted with the things that we're here just to experience. I just want to experience warm water and warm sand and sunshine. Mm-hmm. But I also want to experience, I turn open the water thing and out comes water. <laughs> yes. Right? I want to experience um, trees and wind and the leaves falling on me. And then I look and I pick up the leaves and hold them on the sun. It's like, I like to experience that. But I also want to go to the grocery store and have like 700 things to pick from. Yes. And the money to get them. Right. <laughs> right. So at some point, some structure needs applied to the physical real. Yes. Because unlike the non physical real, I can't just um, blink my eyes, turn, and then there's that there, and then blink my eyes, turn, and that I'm over there, and there's food, and the, I don't even need food. And I'm not in that real. Mm. I'm in the real that requires food and time between thought and thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. But that, and that requires some form of structure, mm-hmm. which in a light reality, that structure supports those experiences. Right. Yes. It's life affirming. Life affirming. Supportive. Supportive, etc. Joyful. So we were playing with words and benevolent, not a dictator, because a benevolent dictator wouldn't actually, need light dictate. dictator <laughs> wouldn't need to dictate anything. Right. right. So more like light guide, benevolent. Yeah. Or whatever, not like guide. Yeah, guide, yeah. <laughs> Some structure, man. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> we'll come all over the place, right? Yeah, plus it is part of the human collective's nature uh, in a high-frequency way to receive guidance and structure. That's so that right, the person because, can I mean, concentrate on what they're doing. Right? We, were, we weren't designed to listen and 
not obey the right word, but you know what I mean. It's like, hey, everybody, let's go over here from the right person. They'll be like, okay. Yeah. That's so a good. natural structural it is, yeah. form. Uh -huh. And it's just corrupted in some ways in by light ways. dark to have light dark. Right. Of course, by choice. Right. But <laughs> the one time we say, no, I ain't listening to you, then we get the other, we get the stick. Yes. So it's like kind of by choice. <laughs> <laughs> we can say no, but we might get yes, beat for it. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, anyway, indeed. I was just playing with that. Mm -hmm. What I what I mean to say is um, it is a natural tendency to accept guidance and structure from those other light beings who we, I don't know, defer would be the right word, but it would essentially be um, co-orchestrate the reality we both like to experience. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Try to find the right words. It's so kind of hard. It is, isn't it? Yeah, especially when you talk about dictators. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but also timelines and your free will choice, right? Because yes. dictators and free will kind of not compatible. It doesn't seem like they're compatible, but you just said you know it was your free will choice to be have a dark dictator, right? Yeah. So you could have a free will choice to have a light mm -hmm. guide. Mm -hmm. We're calling it a light guide instead of a dictator, if that's okay with you. Yeah, let's do that. It's just got less baggage. Yes. Less Bag baggage. Yeah, less baggage. Yeah. So as a light guide, would you say about locking in a light timeline? It's a, as a guide, I would say you listening, you know what to do, you know how to remove your low frequency engagements and programs and only engage with those individuals that you love at a, at a light part, the beautiful part, the inspirational part, and don't engage with them on their dark side, right? Even though yeah. they might invite you and everything, say, no, you know, I'm going to engage with you at a loving, beautiful part only. And, you know, you're going to get resistance at first, but eventually they'll respond to it. Mm -hmm. they I have do. seen it. I have seen it too. And it's, a, it's amazing when it happens. It might take a while, but it's worth it. And that's your job. Your job is to stop feeding the dark part of the reality through all the negative stuff that you might pop up with and start feeding the light, you know? So lock in the light timeline by not locking in the dark one. Yeah, by not feeding it. By not feeding the light dark one. Yeah, it's not hard. It's not that difficult. But it's at quantum level. So it's quantum meaning the smallest piece. Smallest piece. At a, every day, at a tiny little piece at a time, at like a tiny little second at a time, you make those choices. Become aware of your choices and choose things that bring joy, light and love into the world and drop the things that bring fear enslavement, anger, frustration, and all those negative things, suffering and pain. Okay. I think that sounds like a plan. Okay. Let's, Let's lock it in, baby. Let's lock it in. Okay. Love you. Love you too.